Is it true cooked food cannot be left in room temperature for longer than four hours? I have only recently discovered that cooked food shouldn't be left in room temperature for longer than two quarters of an hour. I lived in a tropical country which is warm and humid and I have been growing up eating leftover cooked food, meat, rice, bread, dairy products and left in 30 C for longer than six hours, with no issues. In fact it's very normal to the people in my country. So my question is the two quarters of hour only a strict guide for commercial food seller? How come people in my country do not have issues with leftover food? Is this habit a silence killer which only breaks out when we grow old? The food safety guidelines are based on scientific and mathematical calculations along the lines of Given an initial bacteria count of X they will under the given conditions muletply to a number of YAMD have produced Z, unit, of toxins. Now what to do with these values? We use them like seat belts or helmets. Not wearing a seat belt will not automatically kill you. Only if you are involved in an accident you are much more likely to suffer severe injury or death without it. Still, nobody could responsibly recommend ignoring a seatbelt, knowing that accidents do happen. But with food safety, many are willing to skip their seatbelt, so to speak. One very common misconception is that contaminated food can be detected by smell, looks or taste. Yes, some kind of spoilage is obvious but many, especially the more dangerous ones, are not visible. One very prominent example is salmonella. See link. 1. Dot. Note that many toxins are not destroyed by cooking. More details in our canonical post. See link. 2. Dot. I can guarantee that people in your country have issues with cases of foodborne illnesses. All countries do. You need to keep in mind that foodborne illnesses need not become apparent immediately or shortly after a meal. The symptoms of salmonellae, see link, 3. For example, might start as late as 72 hours after infection. It is likely that the connection between a sudden bout of sickness and a meal eaten three days prior is simply overlooked. In healthy adults infections may pass unnoticed or cause only mild sympot MS like indigestion. The human body can handle a certain amount of bacteria or toxins, the individual levels of tolerance vary, though. So children, elderly people or those with a compromised immune system are more likely to suffer and have a higher chance of severe complications or death. The given safety guidelines are calculated to protect these groups as well. Also note that often the side effects are as dangerous as the pathogens themselves, diarrhea being a classic example. There is no way of determining the amount of bacteria present in a specific dish, piece of meat or other food prone to spoiling, unless you get a lab involved. The values used to calculate safe the shoulds contain a certain safety margin. Your dish could contain fewer bacteria to start with or if any were present, they might not have multiplied that much. But they might as well have, we can't safely know. The 2-4 hours rule simply means that the food will remain in the safe range, not that it will be spoiled afterwards. So what now? It is entirely up to you to whether you choose to drive with or without seatbelt or helmet. Make an informed division and consider the welfare of those weaker than you. What you as a healthy adult can stomach, pun intended, might be fatal to a young child or weak elderly person. Only a few days ago the WHO, see link, 4. Published a news release on foodborne diseases. First ever estimates of the global burden of foodborne diseases show almost 1 in 10 people fall ill every year from eating contaminated food and 420,000 die as a result children under 5 years of age are at particularly high risk, with 125,000 children dying from foodborne diseases every year WHO African and Southeast Asia regions have the highest burden of foodborne diseases. Source, C-Link, 5.